Welcome back to Lifecycle 101. We're in part 8 and we're going to talk about pagination today. So we have our form letter sample 2 form open here and we've been working with this for a number of episodes and I mentioned briefly this pagination tab and so I want to discuss more fully now what that is and what it does. Our design view is set to main and main has pagination options. Also, if we went to table test, we would have a pagination option here. But if we went to something like TXT client, there is no pagination setting. So pagination settings are available on subforms or design pages and tables. See subform footer here has pagination settings. And so I want to discuss a few of these things. First of all, what does it mean following previous? That seems to be a consistent setting in all these three objects following previous. Well this is difficult to articulate because I've had to learn this over the years just by trial and error what these things mean. There really wasn't a good explanation of this in any of the help I sought out or any of the training I received early on nine years ago. Following previous as best as I can ascertain is basically do the same thing or live or exist on the same content area that the previous object existed on. So in other words if there were two pages main and main and page two and page two was set to following previous and main was set to appear on master page one here content area body one then this page here would follow that it would follow the previous setting or to be more specific if subform footer was set to be inside of main which was set to be inside of body one then page two is set to following previous then it's going to continue on in that same master page but if there's two master pages which our form currently doesn't have I'm going to go ahead and create a second master page call it page three and then I'm going to just for conventional reasons I'm going to change the name here to main two because I don't want to have two objects called page two and I'm going to change this again this is that naming thing coming up again the default naming is really atrocious in lifecycle so now I have page two and body two and body two is a separate content area from page two so now on page one we have this content area and we have this he header but in page two we don't have any header we just have the content area and I'm going to go ahead and increase that content area to the full page. Now, to maintain some consistency on this second master page, I want to have these objects. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to paste these down here. Like that. But I don't want any kind of header on page two here. And let's see what that does now in our document our main page lives on master page one by default because it's the first master page we could also set this to say in content area body one and it would be the same thing but following previous is, is the default setting and it just means okay whatever the first master page is if this is the first design object go to that master page and exist or live in those constraints but now we have a main page too and I'm just gonna drag some content on here just just to create something that we can use. So now there's a text field on there. I'll call it text field text txt page and I'll make it really big like this and I'll make it allow multiple lines and I'll make it height expand to fit. Alright so now we have main And that's set to following previous and now we have main 2 also set to following previous but let's say we want main 2 to not have this header content up here we want it to live on master page 2 so what we do then is we set this to on page page 2 and as soon as we do that see how that's changed now still has the bottom part because our master page has the bottom part doesn't have the par top part anymore. I want everything in this page of the form called main two or everything all of its children to live in 
the second master page constraints. Now what this seems simple at this point but it gets complicated when you start talking about page breaks and flowed pages and so now our our document let's go ahead and save it flows but it flows from two different pages so in other words we have two master pages we have two page templates for this form to live on now this complete form to live on now if this grows past one page it's going to continue to flow inside the constraints of master page one and this page is the second master page and it's going to flow inside of that so let's look at some of the settings that make this happen remember our main page pagination following previous and then after continue filling parent meaning the page after this page continue to fill the parent meaning page one content area but here we've overridden that we've said place this one not following previous but on page two so that overrides the after here then we have the setting near the bottom if data set must be paginated overflow none go to content area body two what I'm saying there is if this page flows too big for this one page and it flows to a second page go to the second master page in other words I only want to see master page one one time let's let's watch that happen now here's page one here's page two let's make it flow a little bit and now look it flows onto the top of the second master page and living inside that second master page already is this piece of content which is now being pushed down now you notice when I got to this last row here the whole text field jumped to the next page in other words it didn't break across the two pages and there's this big huge gap of white space why didn't it do that why in that one row when it just runs out of room to fit why does it jump all the way down well that's another setting that we have let me show you that txt page object has this allow multiple lines but what it doesn't have is it doesn't it's not being set to allow page breaks within content allow page breaks within content that's a checkbox now that checkbox right now is grayed out it's grayed out because the main to design object is not set to allow page breaks within content so a child can't do what its parent won't allow it to do so in order for this child object to be able to break across the page we first have to allow page breaks within content meaning with any of the children in this content and then here we can now do that we can now check that box and it's automatically checked for us because it's expand to fit and lifecycle assumes that so now if this starts to grow too big so now if this text field starts to grow too big it will break to another page let's watch it happen so notice here how the tables growing it's causing a page break it's a break the table is breaking across page one and two but then the text field txt page half of it or half of its on the second page half of its on the third page and if I was inside here typing it would allow that content to go across those pages so sometimes in lifecycle there are many settings that need to be set in order for you to get what you want on the final object and that's that makes things very confusing because people might have the, the pagination settings correct and they may have the flow settings correct but they forgot this allow page breaks within content or some such thing and it can get very confusing there's one more thing I'd like to show you real quick and that is the feature keep with next and so in addition to pagination there's also some settings allow for the avoidance of widows and orphans and so let's say we have a text field here and 
we're going to call it txt next and it's allow multiple lines and it's expand to fit. We don't want txt next to ever be removed from a header field, let's say, above it. We'll call this label, call this label outline. And I'll just put in the word outline here. So we have this object and we have txt next. And we don't ever want these two things to be separated. There is this feature called keep with next. And you'll see it on an object's uh, draw page or field page. Here it is right here. Or you'll see it on a table and a subforms pagination page. Keep with next. And what this does is it's, it, it forces if the field txt next goes to the next page, outline is going to go with it. In other words, make sure outline never exists at the bottom of the page by itself. Alright, our page is going to flow now a little bit. And let's go into this and type some content. And let's say that content is going to cause that to break across the page. Need one more line. It allows the content to break across the page. And on page three, we have the rest of the content here. But what happens if the whole object, txt next, goes to the next page? In other words, what if we add a couple more rows of this and push that down? I'm going to go one more. So you can see there in the, the small outline and the top part of txt next is on page two. There it is. But we add one more row causing txt next to flow to the third page, outline comes with it. And that creates a little bit of white space on page two at the bottom, right here. That's the feature keep with next. And that can be helpful in order to avoid widows and orphans in your form. Okay, that's pagination in Lifecycle. It can get much more complicated than that. But for now, 101 class, beginner's class, you understand pagination enough to make it useful in your forms.